Now, I'm a big fan of the 13-inch convertible category. Over the years, I've reviewed my share of the HP Spectre X360s. Of course, I've done my share of HP Envy X360s. So I just took delivery recently of the HP Envy X360 running the Tiger Lake processor. It has a 13.3-inch display, a full HD display. It's running the Core i7, 1165G7, and it has a 1,000-nit HP privacy display. Yes, it is super bright. And it's actually one of the first privacy displays that I actually like. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP NVX 360 13T here for 2021. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs, I want to let everybody know that in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. You can pick up the HP NVX 360 13T for a starting price of $789.99. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, my unit as tested comes in at $849.99. I think this is competitive pricing, especially for what you get. Again, for those interested, check out that link below. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to that in just a moment. But first, you do get a 65-watt AC adapter that uses a barrel pin connector. And you get the extension cord as well. You get some documentation, including a setup guide. Now, holding the unit for the first time, the first thing that strikes you is its weight. It's only 2.92 pounds or 1.32 kilograms. It's all metal design, has a premium look and feel to it, and it is very portable, easy to take with you on the go. I saw very little flex in the chassis, indicating excellent build construction. You can get this in natural silver or what I have here today, the pale gold. And I'm really digging this pale gold color. Kind of looks pretty classy, pretty sleek too as well. You get some HP branding on the lid as you see here. And you also get the Envy branding on the left hinge. Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. We get a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone combo jack. And you get a drop draw USB-A port as you see here. And you also get a Thunderbolt 4 port. Now, this USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port is full service. That means you can do data charge and display out. That means you could charge this laptop with a USB-C charger, in addition to the ability to charge it with the power port on the other side. And moving over to the right side, you get a micro SD card reader, a second USB-A port that's also a drop jaw port, and you get your power port that you can charge this laptop. Again, you could also charge via that USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port, as I mentioned. I would say all in all for an ultra portable, that's a pretty good port selection. Now you need to be very careful with those drop jaw USB-A ports. As you can see, I bent the lid by accident. It wasn't hard to do. Now to get inside this laptop, like last year's model and the AMD model that we looked at, you will need to remove the rubber strips on the bottom. Be very careful as they stretch and break very easily. But once you do get inside, you notice that you will be able to upgrade the SSD as it is slotted in. Now, as far as the unit that I have here today, as you can see from these reads and writes, pretty good in terms of the speeds, although they are PCIe Gen 3 speeds, not the faster PCIe Gen 4 that we've been seeing as of late. And the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. That means you won't be able to upgrade it as the user, so make sure you get enough RAM for your needs. And my unit has 8 gigabytes of DDR4-2933 RAM, and it is running in dual channel mode. It has Wi-Fi 6 and it is a Bluetooth 5 combo. So both have been working well, good speeds and good connections on both fronts. Now, the good news is that Wi-Fi card is slotted in. That means if you have to swap it out down the road, you have that option. Okay, let's talk about the display. And what we have here is a 13.3 inch IPS display with a full HD resolution. That's 1920 by 1080. Now, that means, of course, that this is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which is optimized for watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, or watching movies. It's actually really good. No black bars. 
Now, this is the HP Shoreview privacy display with the capability of getting up to 1,000 nits, according to HP. Now, I didn't quite get 1,000 nits in my measurements, but I got a super bright 835 nits, making this a pretty interesting choice for those that really like their displays super bright. And as you can see, it is a highly reflective display, and I haven't been the biggest fan of privacy displays in the past, but I have to say this has got to be one of the best privacy displays I've tested so far. A lot of improvements over prior generations. Now, as far as this panel is concerned, I noticed some really good numbers, some really deep blacks, good white points, good contrast on this, really excellent contrast, in fact. Delta E score of 1.43, so this is a color accurate display since anything below two is considered pretty good in terms of color accuracy. And it does cover the color gamut pretty well. 100% sRGB, 76% Adobe RGB, 76% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 72% NTSC. So for those that like to do Photoshop, Lightroom, and of course video editing, this is not a bad choice at all. It's actually pretty decent. Now, because this is a privacy display, looking off access, you'll notice that it does have a few colors up in the upper right-hand corner there. That's just a byproduct of it being a privacy display with the type of layers that they're using, something to be aware of. Now, of course, you don't need to get it with the privacy display. They offer SKUs with a standard full HD resolution. That would be, again, 1920 by 1080. But one thing to note, there is no 4K option. Would have been nice. If you want a 4K option in this type of ultra portable, you'll have to check out the Spectre X360. But my overall takeaway with this particular display is I'm actually kind of surprised I do like it, especially since I haven't been the biggest fan of privacy displays in the past. Good job on that front, HP. So this is the front-facing camera on the HP NVX 360, 13-inch running the 11th Gen Tiger Lake processor. This has that 1,000-nit privacy display, which actually is a really good privacy display, one of the best I've seen. Although I'm not the biggest fan of privacy displays, this is actually one of the better ones I've tested. Now, this is a 720p webcam, uh, 30 frames per second. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the internal mics? Now, it's not a Windows Hello camera, no face recognition as far as Windows Hello login, but there is a fingerprint scanner located within the keyboard that allows you to do that as far as logging in to Windows Hello. Now, there is a key to shut off the webcam located within the keyboard. When you press it, the camera goes off and it shows a silver light above it. So there you'll know that you're not on, the camera's off, and that gives you more security and privacy. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. And of course, this being a convertible means you can put it into different modes. Here you see it in tent mode, great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media. The same could be said for the stand mode. And of course, you could always put it into tablet mode for use if you opt to get the pen. Now, the pen didn't come with this SKU, but there is a pen available if you want when you check out. And it's good for taking notes, sketching out artwork. It uses the Microsoft Pen Protocol or the Entrick Pen technology, the same as the Surface Pen. And I thought it worked pretty well. Again, great for taking notes and sketching out artwork. It's a nice value add if you do get the SKU with the pen in it. Otherwise, you'll have to pay extra for it. And I'm really liking the keyboard. I'm finding that the key travel is really good, good tactile feedback, and it's very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. It doesn't feel like your fingers will bottom out. That's been pretty good. Now, it does have a multi-stage backlight. That allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment, and I thought it worked pretty well. And it has a precision touchpad. I thought the size was pretty decent and I found it very responsive. Two finger scrolling worked really well and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Overall, good job. Now, when it comes to performance, actually pretty good for everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, all work well on this device. This is running the Core i7, 1165G7, 11th Gen Tiger Lake processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and it also has, of course, the integrated Iris Xe graphics, which to me are some of the best integrated graphics you can get, as we saw from the numbers, not only from this device, but other devices running the same chipset. And it goes without saying, this is not a gaming laptop, but you can play some games if you lower the settings. Now, of course, you could always add an external GPU for more graphics horsepower, thanks to the Thunderbolt 4 port that this has.
And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, I noticed the CPU would turbo boost up to 4.093 gigahertz for about 15 seconds and reach a core temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. And then it would drop anywhere between 1.2 and 1.9 gigahertz to maintain a cooler 68 degrees Celsius. So you will notice thermal throttling. This is not unusual for an ultra portable laptop. And I thought they did a good job as far as surface temperatures are concerned, not getting overly hot, never getting too hot to the touch. And the single fan will ramp up under heavy load, but it never gets overly loud, not too annoying. That's good. Now, there are two bottom-facing speakers, and as you notice, they're off to the side. That's going to actually improve the audio quality coming out of this laptop. Decent mids, a little bit of bass on it, and it does have good volume. I think they did a pretty decent job, especially for an ultra-portable when it comes to the audio. Now, as far as the battery life is concerned, this has a three cell 51 watt hour battery and it did nine hours and 48 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. So what does that mean in real world mixed usage? You're looking at anywhere from seven to eight hours, maybe eight and a half hours, depending on what you're doing with this laptop. So your mileage may vary. And you're looking at about 90 minutes for a full charge with the included 65 watt power adapter. Not bad. All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the HP Envy X360 convertible 13-inch laptop here for 2021? And I got to say, I really like it. And I'm super surprised on just how much I like that 1,000-nit HP Shoreview privacy display. It's actually one of the best implementations of a privacy display I've tested to date, and that's good. I like the long battery life you get with it. I like the pen support that it does give you. Thunderbolt 4 port here, full service, data charge, display out. Good audio from the speakers all metal sleek design i like the design on this excellent keyboard and touchpad good selection of ports ssd and wi-fi are upgradable negatives of course soldered ram that means you cannot upgrade it yourself no 4k option as far as the display is concerned it still retains a 16 to 9 aspect ratio kind of wish it was a 16 to 10 and it does have a 720p webcam which to me is not acceptable in 2021 and you don't get an ir webcam so there's no windows hello login from that camera but there are no deal breakers here, ladies and gentlemen. I really enjoyed my time with the HP NVX 360, and I'm going to give this a score of 93%, definitely making it worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the NVX 360, 13-inch version here with that 1,000-nit privacy display? Now, I didn't quite get 1,000 nits, but I did get 835 nits making this a super bright display, one of the brightest I've seen pretty much ever. And it really does capture a lot of the essence of what this laptop is all about. You got that all metal design. I'm really digging this pale gold color, but of course you can get a skew with the natural silver color that we've been seeing. Now this has the Core i7 1165G7, that's the 11th gen Tiger Lake processor, integrated Iris Xe graphics. This is gonna be great for everyday type performance, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked well. You're getting eight plus hours of battery life on this, which is pretty good. And you really get pretty much everything in a nice ultra portable design and chassis here, easy to take with you on the go good port selection, and it really makes for a really good mobile device. Now at $850 or so, very competitive pricing. I think this is a good price to performance ratio, considering the build quality, considering the performance, the battery life, and of course that thousand nit privacy display. So if you're one who wants to get a lot of privacy and security, this is a laptop you wanna look at. And the best part about it is it won't break the bank. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.